and killer of all Americans, visit us online at marionheartwalk.org. All right. Thank you very much. It's uh, 23 minutes now before 10 o'clock. Deborah Ness is on the phone with Dr. Joshua Nietzsche, and I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm probably not. Deborah is the president of the National Partnership for Women and Families, and Dr. Nietzsche is an obstetrician and gynecologist in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and a physician for Reproductive Health Leadership Training Academy fellow. Uh, they're talking about a report from the National Partnership for Women and Families called Bad Medicine Report. And it's uh, illustrating how a political agenda is undermining health care. Let's find out what they think about this. Deborah Ness and Dr. Joshua, is it Nietzsche or Nietzsche, sir? Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I'm so sorry for messing your name up. Uh, but anyway, Deborah and Dr. Nietzsche, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Where, where are you at both right now? Well, I'm in Washington, D.C., Okay, and I'm in uh, and I'm in Winston Salem, North Carolina. All right, you know I'm not really sure what direction you're going to take this, but I think everybody agrees the p- political involvement with medicine is just becoming a mess. Well, um, this report is very sobering because it tells us that in more than half of the states in this country, um, they have tr- they have been enacting laws that actually interfere with how the doctor practices medicine when it comes to women's health care services and the wow. provision of abortion services. And I'm talking about things like requiring certain procedures like sonograms to be done whether or not they're necessary. Uh, requiring doctors to provide information um, or to read scripts that sometimes contain blatantly false, inaccurate information, uh, requiring women to come back for visits um, and to wait for time periods that pose additional burden and cost to them and to the system. Um, This is an intrusion of politicians' ideology in the exam room, and it's a very scary and slippery slope to go down. Dr. Nishi, I'm assuming you agree? Yes, of course. Um, Unfortunately, in North Carolina, uh, I'm faced with many of the laws that um, are described in the report. And what it boils down to is legislatures have enacted laws that tell me how I must practice medicine. And they undermine my ability to provide the women of my community with the high-quality care they deserve. Uh, For example, some of the, the laws in North Carolina... Uh, require that women seeking an abortion uh, uh, be provided with the same 13 specific pieces of information uh, and require them to wait 24 hours after receiving that information to receive abortion care. Now, I'll give you an example of how this is unnecessary and and really unsafe. Uh, Consider my patient with end-stage kidney disease with an unplanned pregnancy. Uh, Pregnancy places a substantial stress on the kidneys. And in her particular case, continuing pregnancy would have meant daily dialysis treatments and likely further permanent damage to her already severely diseased kidneys. Okay. Given these grave risks, sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering if, I mean, is it it a broad brushstroke ruling or are they saying if if a woman's life is in danger, you you go ahead and do what's best? Is that that anywhere? There there is a medical... um, uh, emergency exception to the law, but in this particular case, the person's health was not in immediate danger, so she still had to be provided with these 13 bits of information, one of which was that there are alternatives to abortion, including keeping the baby or placing the baby for adoption. Now, in this case, she had clearly considered all of those options and deliberated for quite some time, and specifically stating that fact really didn't do anything but add to her burden. And in this particular patient's case, she lived over two hours away from uh, my facility and didn't have a car. So she had to get herself um, back and forth to my facility twice because of the 24-hour waiting period that, again, just did nothing else but place a substantial burden on this patient and didn't in any way improve her health. And 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 Larry, I I want to point... I was going to point out that in um, not only is um, it the case that doctors are forced to provide information they don't think is in their patient's best interest, but sometimes they have to provide false information. So you have states that have said you need to talk about the link to breast cancer or that it will increase your risk of suicide, things that are blatantly false and that fly in the face of ethical 
scientific evidence-based medicine. Um, and I would urge people to think about what, what does it mean that you can go to your doctor and have to wonder whether or not the information you're getting is accurate, is in your best interest, whether the procedure being recommended is what is best for you. We're at a time when we're trying to create a healthcare system that functions better, provides more access, makes sure people get the right care at the right time for the right reason, and this is exactly the opposite. This is basically requiring things that don't make for good medical practice just because of well, political ideology. What, what is the numbers? I, I guess I'm asking for a statistic, and, and it can be a ballpark, but I mean, are more women getting abortions because it's an option to the birth control that they... The, that didn't work prior to having sex, or are, is well, are, are more are more the, of the women getting uh, abortions because their health is in danger? Um, the, the first of all, the number of abortions in this country is going down. Uh, the majority of women who have abortions already have children, um, and there are a whole variety of reasons um, why women choose to have abortions. And people can have very different views on whether or not they think abortion is the right decision for them or not. But the point we're making in this report is that regardless of the range of views out there, politicians dictating medical practice um, and countermanding scientific evidence is a very dangerous and slippery slope for us to be on. And we're seeing that this is really the canary in the mine shaft because um, there are some states now that have um, been trying to pass laws that would prohibit pediatricians from talking to families about um, whether or not there's a gun in the household because they want to keep docs from talking about gun safety. There are states that are passing laws that that prohibit or circumscribe what a doctor can talk to patients they're treating who've been exposed to toxic chemicals in the fracking process because those supporting fracking don't want people to know. Um, those are very dangerous situations where people going to the doctor cannot trust that they're getting honest information, uh, let alone the best standard of medical care. It, it, it those is, views are... It is interesting because a politician's job is supposed to be to represent the people, and if that's in, indeed the people's opinions, then then it is something we need to campaign about. I, um, I, I wish we had more time to talk about this. There were some deep, deeply-seated uh, emotions, I'm sure, from our listeners because the phone is ringing off the hook right now. I'll just let you know. Uh, do you want to give out a, a website so people can look at the report themselves? Yes, would love to. Uh, people can, can see for themselves at www.nationalpartnership.org slash badmedicine, and you can get directly to the report that way. Okay. Uh, I appreciate you both being on the air with us today. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. We will take, take a little break, and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Intervals of clouds and sunshine today. There can be a shower or thunderstorm in the area this morning. But a couple of thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening hours. The high 87 to 91. And partly cloudy later tonight. Low 69 and a few inland spots 74 near the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny with an afternoon thunderstorm. Mainly over the interior. The high 87 to 91. On Saturday, clouds and sun with an inland thunderstorm in the afternoon. High 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Seniors Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Yeehaw! Howdy, folks. R.L. here to invite you to DQ. Dairy Queen is serving the crispiest, juiciest, most tasty chicken tenders, all beef chili.